Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at this 2023 Infiniti QX50S. Uh, the QX50 is Infiniti's compact SUV. It's been on sale in this current generation since 2019. And as of last year, the 2022 model year, there is also a coupe styled version dubbed the QX55. Not a lot of changes here for 2023. Uh, the price goes up, but more features come standard. So those two things kind of net out. I guess you could say the biggest change is the addition of this new sport trim level. Uh, the QX50S here gets the fascia, the front fascia from the QX55. So it's a little bit more aggressive looking and it gets the wheels from the QX55. Uh, these are 20 20 inch wheels. Uh, the rest of the lineup mostly comes with 19 inch wheels and it gets some dark accents. There's an S badge on the back. Uh, this one has a red interior and well, that's, that's really about it. So let's do a little tour of the 2023 QX50S here and then take it for a drive. So this is certainly not a bad looking vehicle. I know that's subjective, but I doubt many people would disagree with me. Up front, you can see the black accents. So this, this part, this isn't really how they advertise it, but if you look, uh, this is the same part on the front of the QX55. Other trim levels of the QX50 get a more sedate uh, front front bumper here, if you can, if you can still call this a bumper. Uh, but black surround around the grill, uh, the Infinity emblem is still chrome and looks to include a bunch of sensors. Uh, headlight design's pretty subtle. The design of the hood is kind of unique. The cut line is right here. It actually overlaps. You see that? Huh, I guess that's intentional. It's definitely intentional certainly a unique design choice. Let's take a look at the wheels. So these are, like I said, 20 inch wheels. They're both silver and black. So you get these silver things there. And then the rest of the wheel itself is black. Moving down the side, uh, body colored mirror caps. This one's like a gray color. A lot of sport models will have black mirror caps. Not this one, they are body colored. Uh, you do have black roof rails though. There's a nice big panoramic sunroof up top. Uh, more black around the greenhouse here see that piece is all black. Move around back, the badging is black on the tailgate. So it says all wheel drive, and then infinity, there's your infinity emblem, and then QX50S. Look inside the cargo area. So like I said, this is a compact SUV, so space is on par with other vehicles in this segment, including like the Acura RDX, the Lexus NX, and a few others. Not much going on back here. There are levers for putting down the second row seat backs uh, from the cargo area. That really comes in handy. I was loading a ladder earlier today, and it was nice. I didn't have to go around to the door to put the seat down. I was able to just reach here pull that lever and then slide the ladder in all pretty much in one motion. Let's see what's under here. So there's a storage compartment, tow eyelet, and no spare tire. No spare tire underneath either. Uh, other things back here include a light. Looks like there's a provision for a cargo cover. Uh, there's a hook right here and then a 12 volt outlet right there. Oh, and then there's a hook, ooh, plastic hook for a cargo net to go across, across the back here. And then some tie downs, although unfortunately they are also plastic. So you wouldn't want to hook anything more than like a, a net onto these. Here's the key. Uh, pretty familiar infinity key design. So you've got lock, unlock, push and hold for the power lift gate, and then remote start right here. I don't really agree with the layout of these buttons. I think lock and unlock should be at the top uh, thinking there. The thing you mostly want to do with your key fob is lock the vehicle. That's kind of the most important thing. So you want that to be at the top so you can just kind of feel it in your pocket. But uh, yeah, for whatever reason, they put remote start at the very top. Let's take a look at the window sticker. So you can see this is a 2023 Infiniti QX50 Sport 
with all-wheel drive. Uh, all-wheel drive is optional. If you don't get all-wheel drive, this vehicle uses front-wheel drive. Uh, as equipped, this one comes in at $52,815. Uh, keep in mind that all-wheel drive adds $2,000. So without all-wheel drive, you'd be looking at around 51 k with all-wheel drive, you're looking at about 53. Uh, under the hood is Nissan's two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that uses what the company calls variable compression uh, technology. It makes 268 horsepower and 280 pounds-feet of torque. The QX50 here is rated at 22 MPG city, 28 highway, and 25 MPG combined. Power button is down here. As far as the interior goes in the QX50, it feels pretty good from a materials and quality standpoint, but unfortunately the overall design is starting to feel pretty dated. Uh, Infinity uses this two screen setup for the infotainment system. So up here, you've got kind of a dedicated map. Luckily it's a touch screen, but you've also got some controls down here, like a dial. Uh, this pulls up your camera system and then this pulls up the map. Down here, this is kind of a separate infotainment system. Uh, when you really get to know these two screens, they do kind of behave independently. So down here, you've got your audio controls, kind of like your home hub, and then some climate controls, although luckily we have redundant climate controls along the sides here in the form of physical buttons, which is really good. We love, we love physical buttons for our climate controls. But overall, there's just really no reason for two screens anymore. Most competitors have moved to a widescreen, a single widescreen system with a touchscreen. Um, they've positioned it higher up on the dashboard, which is better for ergonomics. Um, overall, this, this just doesn't, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, these days, though, I don't think Infinity has a really big R&D budget. So unfortunately, this is, this is what we get. Um, this screen up here, this setup has been in Infinity models from as far back as 10 years ago. And then this system down here, I recognize from uh, Nissan trucks like the Titan, uh, the Frontier, and then some other Nissan products. So kind of a, kind of a hodgepodge mismatch of uh, screens here. It's not bad to use. There are just obviously better approaches uh, from other automakers. But beyond that, uh, things feel pretty decent. Like I said, uh, there is a screen in the gauge cluster here. This isn't fully digital. Um, so you have a speedometer on the right here, tachometer on the left, and then this is a digital screen in the middle here. Right now it's showing tire pressure information, but uh, obviously like your trip computer and all kinds of other info appears in this middle screen. The door panels feel pretty good. So this is like a leather material. Not much behind it, but feels okay. The armrest here is pretty cushy. Window controls feel good, although the, the design itself is kind of dated, but whatever. Uh, you do get a Bose audio system in the sport model. Up top is a pretty big panoramic sunroof. That's nice. It lets a lot of light in. Wow, I don't think we want that. Stop. Okay, so it lets a lot of light in when the screen's fully open. Uh, as for the center console, wireless charging pad comes standard now, which is nice. Uh, USB-C and USB-A. We always want to see USB-C in new vehicles, especially for the 2023 model year. And then there's a 12 volt outlet, good old 12 volt outlet on the right there. Cup holders, uh, the transmission lever is pretty easy to use. So to go into drive, you push this button and pull back. To go into reverse, you push the button and pull forward. To go into manual mode, you go from drive and pull back again. And that lets you cycle between drive and manual modes. And then for park, you just push that button there. Electronic parking brake, as to be expected. A couple different driving modes. So you've got standard, sport, a personal mode, and then eco. Uh, center console is fairly spacious. You lose a little bit of space right here. Like this only goes this deep here goes that deep, but I don't know how well you can see. It's kind of a thing here. I don't know if it has to do with the electronics right here, but uh, console box may not be as big as you expect, but overall it's okay. Let's go ahead and check out the back seat. Okay, here we are on the back seat of the 2023 Infiniti QX50, and there, there's a ton of space back here. I don't know how well you can see, but there's a lot of room between my knee and the driver's seat back. That's where I have the seat when I'm driving. I'm about 5'10", 5'11", and I have really long legs. So um, 
yeah, tons of space, even with even with a long legged person in the driver's seat. So that's great. I, I would be comfortable back here uh, on a fairly long drive. On the back of the center console here, you've got USB-C and USB-A. No heated seats in the back of the sport trim here, but you do get heated seats for the second row and upper trim levels. Still get vents on the back here. Uh, no, no independent controls though. And then a little slot where I guess you could stick a phone. As for the armrest, hmm. Yeah, this seat is kind of far forward. Doing this with my head here. So it reclines pretty far. Ah, oh, it's much better. Okay, as for the center console, you do have an armrest, as you would expect, with two cup holders, and then once again, a slot where I guess you could put your phone. That shows you just how much the second row seat back reclines. This is a little far forward. I wouldn't want to ride with the seat back like that, but this is pretty comfortable in this position. Oh, and they still use nice materials on the back doors. Sometimes automakers will skimp out on the back doors. You'll find hard plastic here where you found leather up front, but uh, yeah, Nissan Infiniti still uses leather on the back doors, which, which is good and to be expected given that this is a $53,000 luxury car. Okay, driving this 2023 Infiniti QX50 Sport. I think I've been calling this the QX50 S, and that's because years back, Infiniti had the FX50 S, which was a much higher caliber vehicle. It had a V8 and the Sport package, or the S trim level, actually got you performance enhancements. And it used the same S badge on the tailgate that the QX50 Sport here uses, but I guess the appropriate thing would be to refer to this as the QX50 Sport, whereas that vehicle was technically the FX50S, if you care. There's 50 miles per hour. Uh, it's not exactly fast 268 horsepower and 280 pounds feet of torque though is sufficient i don't think people these days are really looking for these compact luxury suvs to be really fast overall the driving dynamics as a whole aren't aren't necessarily great i don't think infinity really put a lot of effort into them in particular and these days i think that's okay i don't think many people buying these you know, if you're shopping for one of these i don't know that driving dynamics should be high on your checklist but uh yeah just keep in mind this this vehicle may not be as fun to drive as some of its competitors overall though it's pretty easy to live with um like i said while unorthodox this two-tiered infotainment screen setup um it's not bad it's just it's just completely unnecessary and it really doesn't take away from the experience i don't think it would rule this vehicle out for me i just think you can do better uh, from Lexus, Genesis, Volvo, plenty of other competitors uh, have surpassed this setup by now. Here's our first speed bump. Let's take it at 25. That car felt pretty good over that. Try to go a little faster over our next one here. This is 30. The car felt really planted. Um, yeah, that's that's good. Our third speed bump is much bigger. Let's go, let's go 30, why not? Wow. Um, I've never felt anything too crazy when taking a vehicle over those speed bumps, but um, I will say this car felt really smooth over them. Handling, like I said, it's not super sharp. Probably not the highest priority for people anyway these days. Um, yeah, this car overall is just inoffensive. Not the best, not terrible. As far as the backup camera goes, Infiniti has been offering top-down camera systems in a lot of its vehicles for well over a decade now. And those are really nice to have. Unfortunately, they appear to be using the exact same camera, like the exact same part that they were using uh, more than a decade ago. So the screen resolution is really, really low. It would be great if they could just update that tiny little part to give us a, a modern 
image quality here. But uh, either way, the top down view is really nice when you're backing into a parking spot. Um, it allows you to get the vehicle perfectly in the lines, which, which should please a certain type of person like me. So there's your look at the 2023 Infiniti QX50, in particular in this new for 2023 Sport trim level. Just to recap, uh, the Sport trim in this context is just an appearance package. Uh, you get the front end or the front piece off of the QX55, which is the coupe styled QX50, and you get the wheels off the QX55 and a bunch of black trim pieces. Um, if that appeals to you, great just know that the sport model is is a middle trim level so you can't get a sport model fully loaded you can't get a base level sport model your only real option here is uh all-wheel drive or front wheel drive as a whole the qx50 is fine it's it's inoffensive um it certainly wasn't a moonshot for infinity this vehicle has been on the market now since the 2019 model year so it's starting to feel a little bit dated i've harped on this screen system a lot overall these days we're not really getting a lot of innovation from Infiniti um, like Nissan is to say Toyota and Honda. Uh, Infiniti is to Lexus and Acura kind of a value play. So if you're going to buy one of these, it should be because you're able to get it for a few thousand, a few, a few to several thousand dollars less than a comparable, say, Lexus NX or Acura RDX, uh, those vehicles. Well, the NX is new. The RDX is, is from a few years back, hasn't really been changed much. Um, but either of those vehicles is maybe, maybe a little bit more exciting than the QX50 here. But if you can get a few thousand dollars off of a QX50, making it less expensive than a comparable RDX or NX, or there are a number of other compact luxury SUVs on the market, then this vehicle starts to become appealing. And overall, there's really nothing that would disqualify it from consideration for me. Um, just know that the selling point here is that you can hopefully get one of these for a few thousand dollars less than, than some of its competitors. And uh, overall, certainly not an offensive proposition. I think that about sums up the Infiniti QX50, in particular, this new for 2023 sport trim level. Thank you for watching.